Uh, to check this out, um, many of you may have seen my rhetorical analysis of Boji Bantan's um, Drinks Champ interview. First, I wanted to understand that um, my analysis um, was not written from a place of hatred or any form of ill intent towards Boji Bantan. Zane? No maliciousness. As a matter of fact, Boji Bantan is one of my musical heroes. Zane? Um, I think he's the greatest dancehall artist ever. Yeah. Um, so, that now got change. Me understand what I say? However, we have to understand that when someone puts something in um, in the social media space, people are going to anal analyze it or comment on it or you know criticize it. See? So my analysis of the piece, you know, was not from a bad place. It's more of um, my inference of the, the piece um, accompanied by evidence, especially with the maroons and stuff like that. So, but what one thing I, I realize I, I've been getting a lot of hits um, on from the piece is the piece about Afrobeat, yeah, the Afrobeats section, yeah. Now, what I want people to understand is before we before people because there are a lot of people who are saying yes, it's true what Buju is saying about Afrobeat that is, is you know, the artist they only you know sing about sex and money or whatever. But people have to really do their research to make such claim, you understand? Because I'm sure, and I've heard for myself with African artists, um, Bobby Wine, them, and even Burna Boy. I think Burna Boy, Burna Boy last single higher is definitely an inspirational piece. Davido, Stan Strong, inspirational. Um, you know, so there are many Afro artists or African artists. You know, who are who are singing uplifting music. Yeah. Saying that, having said that, we have to also define what is sexualized music. Yeah? What is highly sexualized music? And what is Buju saying when he's when he said they only sing about money? Yeah? Speaking of sexualized music, I believe that the love songs that we grew up on and the soca songs and dancehall, you know, you know, is the most sexual contents you will hear out of any genres. We grew up on love songs where I want to make love to you um, you know, Lady in Red, all of those songs we grew up on, my, 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 those songs, you know, are laced with, you know, you know, you know, lyrics that make you want to have sex, even to this day when you play them. So to call songs highly sexualized, because it is coming to us in a different format, I think it is, I wouldn't have said that then. And I do not agree with that statement that, oh, it's, it's damaging the fabric of the society. And do away with it and sing about war and, you know, government and all of these things. I think sometimes when, it, when you're going through things and you hear a feel-good song, it actually does something to uplift you. It doesn't have to be about... Jesus and God and poverty and all of these things to be uplifting. You understand? You have feel good music. You have feel good music that let you that lift your spirit. You see what I say? Make you want to dance. And one thing we know about Africans, they can dance their way, um, you know, you know, to the top of a mountain and back. You see what I say? And you just feel good watching it. So can you imagine how they feel doing it? You see? 
So when we talk about highly sexualized music, we have to be very careful because dancehall music, especially dancehall, listen me. Me as a dancehall artist, I could not point fingers or any finger on Afro music. Talking about mu their music is highly sexualized and singing about money and all these things. I couldn't do that. And I sing dancehall. The quote-unquote dancehall of today from Jamaica, you know what they're singing? They're singing about girls must have sex with girls. They're singing about um, scamming. They're singing about robbery. <laughs> they're sing the dance I have to before we can point fingers at any one genre or any other genre, excuse me. We have to fix up our yard. We have to point fingers at our yard. The music of today that is coming out of Jamaica. African music is gospel to it. Facts. So I can't jump over the corruption or the whatever you call it or the the the, 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 the music that is destroying the society in Jamaica and go jump over Africa. When I hear a Davido song or I hear a whiskey song, I, I it uplifts my mood. I feel good. Highly sexualized. Oh, they're singing about money, wealth. What? So you agree with the, the occident because it's an occident stereotype thing, you know. And, and that is what, that's why it's important for us to be out here correcting some of these narratives. The occidents, they, they have this stereotype where they placed on Africa like it's just a shit old country and everybody is just poor and living in trees or, or the, the, the culture is, you know, you know, you know, all about poverty and all of them things. You understand? But that is the occident way of thinking. You see? So, what, what Buju's interview is, is, what I get from Buju's interview in that regard is like, it's like, it's like Orientalism. You understand what I'm saying? When there are so many things that we can take from Afro music as positive, like, you know, Afro music paints a different light on Africa. People want to go visit Africa. People not, don't feel like they're going to a jungle. You know, you know, even Jamaicans, you know, we used to say, oh, we're happy that we escaped, you know, we, we came into slavery. There are Jamaicans who believe this, you know. They're not just Jamaicans, there are people in the diaspora who believe that they, it was good for us to go into slavery because we escaped poverty. Because if we were in Africa, we would be living in a tree and eating grass. So, there is something positive for us to take from Afro music. And the last thing I'm going to say, I find it somewhat, I've, I've, I wouldn't have said this, what Buju said when he started the interview. Calling our brothers motherfuckers, yeah, that is something where Buju could have used better words when he was asked about Afro music and reggaeton. Yeah? When you say motherfuckers, it's, it, it doesn't come off like, oh, these Africans are our brothers. It's a massive or musical brothers. So, but again, it's not from a place of hatred. Big up Bojo Bantan. None of we not perfect.